I'm going to share is coming from the experience. Uh, I'm not going to detail, just to let you have sort of a, a glance. Uh, from Thailand, I used to work with the National Housing Authority and then uh, setting up a new institution, which we believe that it would reach the larger number of poor people easier. Yeah? And also assisting the NGO, the several other institutions, and also trying to draft the constitution <laughs> yeah, in the former uh, uh, committee to see how to address the new development in which people are becoming more important actors than government alone. Yeah? Uh, anyway, this, this is my search on the national context and also at the regional context and international context, trying to see what other countries in Asia are doing, what are the good experience and how we can borrow some good idea to put together with our strength and so on. No? So the two sort of contribute to complement to each other. Huh? The Thai knowledge also passing to the international, the regional, the regional also give input to the national change. So we, we work uh, on the left hand side under the Asian Coalition for Housing Rights which we link country in Asia to work together. And I feel that the knowledge of Asian country can be shared, maybe more direct than the Western knowledge, yeah? because we have similar culture. So what I'm going to present will be the experience from Thailand and from Asia yeah? put together. So you can see that I'm quite old, so I've been working in this field for more than 40 years. <laughs> so the first picture is to show you change in Asian cities. This is a little uh, dramatic. Yeah? We changed since 1950 in, in Korea, or perhaps in Seoul. Up to now, the city, same city, changed up to this uh, style. Uh, Myanmar is going to this direction, sorry to say. Well, sometimes we don't like the static uh, development in our country, but sometimes you can keep this kind of <laughs> situation for quite a long period of time. If we open up our country to the international investment, it, it would move so fast like this. Yeah? It looks beautiful but it has also a lot of problems, huh? and we lost our identity. Yeah. What are the problems? These are the time when I visit Korea, is a lot of eviction going on, because uh, it's a very forceful change, where they want to change the country quickly, ch change the area quickly. So we manage all the housing, the uh, development that uh, stay there for maybe so many decades or a hundred years. And when you demolish area, any area, it's not only houses, it's not only physical. We demolish, we eradicate the relationship, the culture, uh, the social wealth uh, that exists. It's our roots, it, the roots of the society. We also eradicate that. And then how are you going to fix the new system for the people? It's become very, very difficult. People become individualized. People uh, don't know how to fix themselves with the city properly, especially the poor people, the lower layer, feel, find it very, very difficult to uh, stay in the new housing provided by the government or even the private sector. So this is the situation we have to look into how our city is changing. And is it changing for the commercial development or is it changing for the people? Uh, and this is where I am working, trying to see how we can uh, find a way which is uh, development happen with the people as much as possible. And we, we go with our roots, uh, we strong with our roots, not just a new culture coming and undermine what already exists. Yeah? And this is the picture you see those very uh, people who've been evicted stay in the squatter, still some staying. Huh? A little bit change, uh, find a space, how they can fix themselves with the 
the other accommodation. But I, I visit uh, the Korea two, three years back, still finding the, the rental room, which is quite bad. I mean, you, you cannot see the squatter like this. You see only the nice square building, but inside you have uh, uh, the, the very small box of rental room, something like that. This is also in Mumbai. Now it starts changing quite a lot, the squatters. So the city is going very fast. Uh, there are evictions going on, and you have new people coming in the city, but there are no solutions uh, developed properly for the people. You see different picture like this, or you see the what we call cage people. It, where where you know, it's in Hong Kong. Even now, you can see that uh, uh, each person live in a space like this, one meter by two meter, and 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 three box on top of each other because uh, they they all so they cannot buy proper housing and or, or, or this is the worst uh, sometimes you have a very very small space where people have to rent in uh, say five square meter box huh? and, and and not cheap huh? in my opinion or you see slum squatter like this in in most of the cities in asia so this is the situation that we have to fix yeah and, and then, but why, why we cannot fix it? No. Why planner like us, which have a lot of knowledge, cannot fix it? And, and many of our uh, housing arrangements that we try to develop to, for the people are not working because we have problem with the formal and informal. We, the centralized uh, still not have the policy, no money, settlement is too far away, people are coming back. I mean, these are all the kind of reasons and, and, and a lot more. Huh? Why systems are not working? Yeah? We are not uh, blaming anybody, but we try to look at it as a professional. Uh, uh, this is the situation. This is the truth. And so how are we going to fix this? Yeah? And we look into the two possible options in general. You, we have government option and we have private sector option. Uh, the two options are not easily working for the poorer people. Yeah. Government option is that it's too, it's too slow, too far, uh, it go to the wrong target group, sometimes corruption, and even expensive uh, uh, problem, job opportunity, so many types. Uh, so we, we put subsidy, we uh, construct it, and most of the case is not for the poor, or the poor may stay a little bit and then they sell it to the other, whatever. So it doesn't seem like a very uh, uh, effective solution for the modern society. Therefore, so many countries are now looking for the private sector because private sector are more flexible, quick, and efficient. But the private sector housing are mostly unaffordable for the lower layer. And you have problem of standard if it's uh, affordable the cheaper, the worse. Huh? Now they're talking about the housing unit, which is just 20 square meter for a family. If you want a cheap one, it's not possible how it, it could be like that. And it, in, it's individualized. This is something I, I, I fight. Uh, the big giant of private sector commercial housing, good. They produce a lot of physical uh, number. But people live individually. The big condominium, the big apartment, people don't know each other. No community any longer. Where, where are the social system? It's not exist anymore. So the big number of private housing development today is making our city living individually. Why we live together as a group in the past, now there's no such alternative huh? in, in, in the city. Anyway, it's one solution. We, physical is physical. We can always put the social inside, only it's not uh, there in the new modern development. Uh, it's far away if you want to achieve one. Yeah? Uh, so 20, 30 percent in, in, in Yangon now, in Myanmar, will be more. Huh? More than 30 percent of urban poor population cannot reach this two alternatives for the time being. And this is why the poor become the victims.
they also need houses, but not for you because whenever they plan for the development, uh, all these good people who happen to be poor have to be the victims. So the key point for this presentation is the search for the alternative solution. Yeah, why the cities or housing have to be developed only by government and private sector. It's very good if government do more, it's very good if private sector do more, but why don't we have other options by the people also? And why don't we retarget the people as subject, which is the case in the past. In the past, only people deal with their housing, deal with their community, right? Now, this option doesn't seem to be possible in, in the society. So how can we find a way that people themselves get together and find a solution and not only housing but build community, social unit. This gives us an, another clearer approach to housing. Housing is not just physical units. It's not only physical. It's a system of living in which people live together. People have relationship, people uh, help each other. Uh, we, we also have to think about the fundamental social unit of a, a, an urban system, which now more and more diminishing. Yeah? But housing can also be a place where people live together and have a strong system to help each other. Yeah? How can we make it possible? And not only one or two projects, how can we make it a big scale in which uh, we can reach everybody as much as possible. Okay. So we need to refocus really on the support and see how this alternative will be possible. Which means we may have to look at the poor with the new eyes. Because in reality, in Myanmar also, poor people find solutions every day. <laughs> no matter the, the government, the local authority, uh, give or not give anything, Land, you have land or you don't have land, poor people who come to the city sneak into uh, the housing alternative found by themselves every day. So they're really very passionate, they're really very able to find solutions, the, the solution that nobody supports them very much. Yeah? So if we look into this actor as a very interesting actor uh, and, and how to bring this energy into a housing, a bigger housing solution model, then this could be very, very interesting. And by people working together, it's not only houses, they also build a system among themselves. So this would attain a different object, objective in itself. Uh, before going into the solution, this is just the annex, but I, I just like to put it here uh, to show some of my earlier uh, experience in the land sharing. So I will show you four or five slides, my experience working in the in the 80 and in the 90 before finding a bigger solution for the people. I work in the conflict area of eviction, a lot of eviction like this. It's been a, a, a big community before, but after some time people been pushing out and at the end these are left and they still have to be out, but we able to negotiate with the landlord that instead of you pushing everybody out, why don't you sell the land and everybody stay just 20% of the former land. Huh? You sell in cheap price and people could build their house. Sorry, I cannot show you the picture, no? but you can understand being architect. So everybody move into this area and everybody happy in a short time. They're su supposed to move in three months. They've been evicted for four years without success. Huh? But three months, you move here, you can build, build the, the housing project for the richer people up to you. Yeah? This, is, this is also another project where they develop into a, a, a high rise. And people live on, on the, the, the upper floor and the lower floor were allocated for the commercial. Like this, like this. Any scale can be land sharing. Land sharing, very good for Asia. 
Thailand and Myanmar because we are compromising society actually. Yeah, uh, if we cannot resist the new change and it's you cannot deny that. Just share it. No? Why not doing it in housing development <laughs> or land development? It's possible. We can bring the culture into our profession. Housing development doesn't need to be the Western type. It could be the Myanmar type, it could be the Thai type. We share things. No? <laughs> so this is, uh, you can see the different, different type of uh, land sharing. This is 200 families. The land has been cut to two parts. This is about 40% of the former land, and everybody moved here. And this is the commercial. And from this, they build the three-story housing. Land size is not big, but the floor area is bigger than the, in the past. Yeah. This is uh, the big project, 800 units. After so many years of negotiation, it's agreed that the, the landlord and the developer build this apartment for the people in 25% of the former land. This is the one. This is the Silicon Convention. <laughs> so you're very prestige living in the heart of the city. Yeah? And the, the rent is very cheap. Very cheap, uh, the, the, as cheap as the government rental housing. Uh, this is the Silicon Convention. If you went to Thailand before, you know this is the heart of the city. Before, these are all the slum area. Yeah? And, and we moved the slum area where, you know, this is the flat. Yeah? So all the slum people who live here, squatters, slum, lento, whatever, they're able to stay here. 60 square meter unit. Huh? <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> But this is a compromising solution, huh? which can be planned. Planner can plan anything. Planner are really uh, important profession, I think. We can plan anything, but how we bring the benefit and uh, uh, the, the needs of everybody into our planning process and find a proper plan to accommodate everybody, the rich, the poor, the society, whatever. Yeah. So this is the, the, the point. Next. This is very big Islam, 7,500 7, uh, 7, family, the pot. Yeah? Uh, they share this land, so this group of people have to move here, and they re-block re -block this area. This is a resettlement. So you can do in whatever size. This is 7,000 families, land challenge. I, I involve uh, this one not too much, but the other project, yes. So I learned what, the, what are the conflicts and how we can find a way that everybody can accept the, uh, the uh, compromise solution, yeah. Then I work with the government. I was the work with the National Housing Authority, and I resigned because the government is too slow for me, and there are more problems and more possibility that we should be able to address. So I resigned and, and then we set up a new institution called the Community Organization Development Institute in uh, 1992. Uh, and we work with the community in a big scale. Let the people be the actor, yeah. In 2004, the work sort of expand throughout the country. The government, at that time, it's the government who brought a more popular <laughs> process. They agree with the policy of, uh, national policy of citywide slum upgrading. Citywide slum upgrading is important because instead of we work one area here, one area there, you spend three years, four years, finish one project here, one project there, the speed is slower than the speed of the migration. The speed of solution today in most of the city in Asia is slower than the speed of the problem. Okay. Huh? So we need to work at the citywide scale. Citywide scale means you know uh, what the, the situation of the citywide, and, and let everybody start working. Poor people start. Huh? After the survey, start uh, saving, uh, start linking together, start learning, start negotiating, start seeing what are the solutions. Yeah? 
So we have to work in a bigger scale in order to solve the problem, the problem bigger, and so that the people are becoming active, not being the recipient. Make the people be the key actor yeah, as much as possible. I, I show you how. So 2004, the Thai government have a national policy to support citywide upgrading. And we have the institute, which I work at that time as the director uh, to support. We get the money from the government. Very good, the policy, but you give the money to us. Yeah? And then we pass the budget directly to the community. Okay? We give people the budget if they organize as a cooperative as an organization. They plan themselves, they save themselves, they have the management system. No matter how much you purchase the land, we give you the loan. They need to develop the infrastructure according to the plan, no matter how much we give them the subsidy. They manage. Yeah. So let the people be the manager. Huh. <laughs> Not an easy thing to do, but as a concept, let the big scale of the people be the solution, which means not just give them the money. They need to organize, they need to learn, they need to get together, they need to know how to uh, manage. Uh, this is development. So thinking in, in big scale and trying to let the people do things by themselves is become a new development model, yeah? And it is possible, yeah? Uh, Cody just manage the fund. Yeah, and pass to the community. Okay. In doing so, we need a, an active demand driven. Uh, people have to be active, have to be organized, uh, need to be citywide, and you need new finance system, and this is the key. Okay? This is the key. How to find a new finance system, which is easy for the people to get access to. Today we don't have. You have the source of fund go to the government to do the public housing and other. You have the private sector which can get the money from different sources and do according to their terms. But there are financial source for the people in general. Except you are professional, you, this loan uh, can get the loan definitely <laughs> as individual from the bank. But for poorer people, it's not. Not, not possible. Huh? You don't have the slip, you, you, the bank will not give you the loan. So they are out of the financial system. So this is a system that you find a new financial system which is friendly to the system of poor people and let them be the actor in a big scale, in a big way. And not only looking at housing as houses, but looking housing as a system to build people, a system to build community a foundation of the society, and we're going to solve several problems at the same time. Yeah? So the, the idea is to link whatever the municipality, the community, the other development agency to, to, to work together in a, in a common platform at the city level or a district level. Yeah? Look at all the uh, low-income communities and find different solutions. We start with the people and the system and see what are the form of change. The form of change can be on-site upgrading, can be land sharing, can be reblocking, can be flats, can be resettlement. Yeah? So different communities can prepare themselves for different solutions. If you negotiate well, you can stay in the same place. <laughs> if you don't do anything much, you may, may have to move according to the force and whatever. So, by, by, by pulling the system together, we can help each other also. So each community would not uh, work in isolation, yeah? but there are the supporting system among the people and the community. Oh. So this is like the picture. Actually, this is the picture of Ayutthaya, huh? the heritage. <laughs> These are the slum area, <laughs> okay? We have so many slum area, but it's the same as every city in, in Thailand. You have to start seeing where are these communities yeah? and what are the different conditions. We have to do the mapping. We have to do the house survey. 
and then you link all these community together with the city and to see how we plan the whole all the solution as as much as possible i'm thinking as planner this is not very difficult it's possible but by 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 planning we are planning the the people process also we are planning the system in which people would have to work for themselves when i say upgrading community upgrading is not physical upgrading alone physical is very important because it's a transformation from the very untidy unsettled situation into a proper uh, situation but we also upgrade people we also upgrade the status we also upgrade the management capacity we also upgrade the social uh, structure we upgrade everything uh, it's a holistic upgrading we have to think about not together in one row but see the whole element and see how we can uh, use the process of upgrading and housing to change or to develop everything as an integrated development yeah and this is possible because people are always integrated everybody are not doing thing as a kind of a stereotype we have to deal with finance we have to deal with family we have to deal with this and that i mean we are integrated but the system in the society tend to be very sectoral so we need to by the way how the system of this city wide development is more integrated as much as possible so start with like in this district uh, the survey you bring the community the network into an active survey so they are the one who make a survey and they really enjoy it no even community are the active actor doing the survey they can compare their community with the other they understand the reason why they have the water the other community don't have the water and so on so surveying in some way is like opening the university of how the different community how the different poor people are living yeah and they can compare they understand the reason and they can see how they're going to fix it together but the point is to use the survey to understand what are the information the difference the status and also to boost the community to be an active actor oh okay. and then the planning from the different community how we can find a way that there are professional architects to work with the people on the alternative plan you ask any slum low income community in the world you ask them whether you need a change everybody will say no we don't need any change we want to live as it is yeah but if you live as it is you will be evicted you will be evicted so you need a change a change mean the planning huh? the new possible way how the the plan of the community would be the land condition the organization the finance and so on and then they need the uh, saving housing development require a lot of money biggest investment in the life of poor people so they need to start saving no saving no housing no saving no housing saving is compulsory saving is compulsory because you need housing you if if you don't live in the legal kind of housing you are illegal person all the time your children will be illegal they cannot attend the school they cannot be a proper citizen are we happy with that so if we want to change start saving saving is a way you include yourself into an active change system no huh? once you you are part of the saving saving already have the link to all the member the members start having more discipline so saving for the community process is being used as a way to uh, organize to build capacity to empower to link the people together in several dimension saving is not only money okay but money is so important so you can make saving as a tool to make a lot of change and saving can be at their level mm -hmm. poor people if you say 
saving like uh, thirty dollar per month. Nobody can save. Huh? You say save uh, one dollar per day, <laughs> two dollar per day. They can save, right? And sometimes this per day, when you put together, is more than that per month. But they never have a lot of money. But they have little money every day. Huh? Okay. So something like that to see what are the finance system which is work by the people for the people and link them up. Yeah, so saving become uh, something very important apart from building the the capital yeah. to to invest in the housing development. Uh, the system of Cody is something like this: once people organize as a group and they sometimes register as a cooperative, we would encourage the people to register as a cooperative because it's become a legal body. Yeah? Once they have a legal body, you pass the loan or the subsidy to the organization. Within the organization, they may have a, a number of subgroup. A subgroup, say, as 20 people or 10 people, and they manage themselves together, everything, repayment, social, welfare, whatever, together. So it's, it's something like you equip the whole informal community into a workable system in which everybody is a member of that company. <laughs> if we use the word company, uh, cooperative. And it's not difficult at all in Myanmar. People are extremely good <clears throat> and they always get together. They like to uh, collaborate. It's there in the society. Yeah? A high potential for this. Yeah? We don't, we, in the modern, uh, modern society development, we don't use this strong potential that exists in our community. Huh? And then we are looking for the kind of uh, uh, financial potential, which we don't have really much. And we try to make ourselves according to that system. Come back to our social uh, strength that we have a lot and, and develop it as a system and see how we manage the finance. Yeah? This is my, my, my point to make. Yeah? So I'm going to show you a lot of model. Huh? Showing architect we need to show a lot of picture. Uh, this is uh, one area where people just purchase this land. There is a slum for so many long years, huh? like this. There, it's a lentil. Earlier, now the landlord want to evict. All the slum will be evicted sooner or later. All the rental room will be evicted sooner or later. Huh? Except you organize yourself as a group and then you, you make a cooperative and then you get the, the loan. You purchase this land together and you sub, subdivide the land and you start moving yourself. So from this, change to this. Very simple. They repaired already within five years. And this picture, I told people all the time that you see this situation as slum and then we condemn them. Very bad, very dirty, very unhealthy, very uh, uh, whatever words we condemn, we lower class and so on. But you give them the loan and let them organize and manage. They manage very easily and then they change to this. Is this slum? No. They look the same, they look proper. But it's the same group of people. Same group of people. People are the same. Systems are not the same. So slums are not in the people. Slums are in the system. Huh? If you understand this very well, you can think of a, a lot of possibility. Now we say system is right. People are bad. <laughs> You're not following the system. People are okay here, yeah, although they're very really poor. But once they get together and they get the loan and an and, and, and opportunity to make change together, they make change. And now they no problem. They even become lecturer to the university nearby yeah? how to work, uh, how to organize this and that. No? So we have to understand this. And then we can think a lot. Yeah? 
Now we, we, we use all the regulation, the system as something which is right, which is fit. And people cannot fit themselves with this. Yeah? So why not using the people as an actor to make all this change and we adjust the system a little bit to accommodate the change. Oh, you see this we call reconstruction. This is one uh, former slum, like this, like this. You demolish them all. Huh? Because sometimes to leave block, it's very difficult. Huh? You have a lot of big house, you hit it. You reconstruct the whole thing. <laughs> and everybody have uh, the same clock size, like this. So you change from this to this. No problem, huh? the payment is only about, uh, what? 50, $50, $60 per month. Huh? We found that in many of these projects, if you were the renter in any area before, you rent, you pay rent. Now you organize as a group and you pay for this construction. Sometimes you pay for the land also. Land and housing is still cheaper than the rent. Yeah? So every day the poor pay something because they're poor, but you can pay less. <laughs> If you organize and there are financial source, ready for the people, okay? This is uh, the famous project of the canal upgrading. You see canal like this, and then people organize yeah, like this. You see, they invade the, the canal. Every canal will be invaded because people don't know where to go. Huh? <laughs> so you get people to organize and plan block by block, block by block, and reconstruct. And this is what they reconstruct with a lot of open space. Same number, huh? better status, better organized. It's all the question of planning. Yeah. But sometimes the planner plan from one side. <laughs> and we look at people as obstacle. People are the problem of the planning process because we plan from one side, from the investment side, from the government side. But why not we fix the problem of everybody at the same time? Yeah. So this is the, the key. Yeah. And this is the resettlement. Here you see the very poor community before they get together and purchase the land. Huh? This is low income housing project. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the poor people own this, no? it's the, the price will be allowed, allowed $10,000. Yeah. But there, there are different types of houses. The, the, the one who can pay more, you can have this. The one who pay less, you may have one story, whatever. They develop over the time. Yeah. But you know, no, no slum there. But this is a slum. We can change, no problem about that. Uh, uh, you, you, you relocate. Uh, uh, you re relocation can be done in different ways. Huh? Uh, far away, nearby, whatever. Here, after the ne negotiation, they want, really want this land, uh, the government, fine with that. Land for land, they say, land for land. <laughs> you want to get land, no problem. Fine, fine us the land. <laughs> so they found this land, and people move here and, and rebuild it. Yeah. Or, or, or you can resettle in this way that you find one land and then people who, who have problems from different parts can come together. Because sometimes it's when you are too small, you don't have the strength to uh, uh, come to stay together and build a strong community together. That's also an option. Uh, or we, we have done quite a lot and it's the same as uh, the, the Myanmar uh, model where you survey the whole area, you find a lot of scattered rental room, which is very difficult. You get all these scattered group of people together to organize as a group, and you find, try to find the land nearby. You purchase the land and you develop the housing. This is one, uh, this, this is an old picture. We cannot see the new project. This is a very beautiful project. You can believe it. You purchase the land, you build the house, the repayment, it's still cheaper than the rent, the former rent, which you face eviction all the time. Uh, this is the garbage community. Extremely terrible living in, uh, in, in the water. I said every evening we find each other. 
we don't know what to do. We drink alcohol and we really angry. So we beat each other. <laughs> it's such a bad condition like that. <laughs> and 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 then we able to negotiate uh, uh, for the land. The people negotiate actually in that city. And and this is their housing. Can you believe the garbage? Garbage collector <laughs> now living in this two story. And this is the governor come for the inauguration. Now he also uh, become a, a, a lecturer, uh, giving talk here and there. All these are garbage collector. <laughs> if garbage collector can change up to this point, anybody in the society can change. Yeah. And this is an important point to remember. Huh? And not only the, the house, uh, you have to clean up the canal. The community who live along the canal have to take care of the canal. Okay. You live with canal, clean up canal, protect the canal, take care of the canal. This is the treatment. It's too expensive if they have to buy from outside. They, 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 they make from this uh, recycle. <laughs> material and make a cheap one. So every house have this treatment before going, huh? the water go to the canal. And the, the people would take care of the canal at the different period of time. They have welfare activities. They have fun and so on. They, they have income generation. They even purchase the rice field together in one of the city. Huh? So the, the, the urban community people will not forget how to do the farming <laughs> and, and then they can also have rights to sell among uh, the member of the network. Uh, by, by linking together as a network in the city, in the citywide approach, they can deal with all kinds of disaster better. Uh, once they get together, they can help each other better. This is the prime minister, former prime minister, uh, who, visit, who, who, who didn't believe that this would be possible. So he visited the welfare house within the community. And he why the, the old senior people, very poor in the community. Next. The, the upgrading, one very important aspect of the citywide approach is the building of the new relationship between the poor people, the professional, and the local authority. If we don't upgrade the power relation, between the very poor and the upper powerful group, then the slum will always be there. Uh, a housing issue is a political issue. It's not money issue. It's a political issue. If you, they see you very important, they find the money for that. <laughs> if you are important, there are policy and budget for that. So the key point is that poor people need to get together. You have the network. Now you are not invisible group any longer. You are visible. You are visible and you are active and you want a big change. You are moving for solution at the time that nobody cares about solution. <laughs> but you are very friendly, talking to government, talking to different departments to ask for collaboration. Little by little, they will come into a process of collaboration. And they accept the, the strength and the ability of the people. The policy are more uh, for the people. Yeah? So the building the new relationship between uh, the government, the people, and the other system so that they understand each other is the, one of the key. And then we move to Asia uh, after, after uh, being the director for eight years, uh, I sort of trying to manage uh, the change in Asia, including in Myanmar, in Yangon here. Uh, so we support cities in Asia for the citywide approach by the people. And these are the cities we support. 215 cities, yeah. What I'm trying to say is not to show up, whatever, which is something not, not that important. What I'm trying to say is that today, there are gaps between the people and the system. But today is a modern society where people are active. People are wake up. People are waking up. People want change. 
People want change. Even young people want change. So how can we make change possible? So if you find a way that uh, you you find the support, so this uh, force of change are active huh? and and going forward, change can be quite easily. We support this change in 200 cities in Asia in the period of four years. Because I'm trying to tell you that what I explained before is not only in Thailand. The citywide approach by the people is not difficult at all. Uh, this is the experience in Asia, uh, and we've done in the period of uh, four years. This is between 2009-2014, we able to support 200 cities, and we support 2,000 small operating projects, 146 housing projects and they're able to put together the money that uh, we support to build a city development fund in 136 cities. Uh, and we even support uh, 30 disaster rehabilitation project by the people. Uh, total budget 14 million. So at some point, they are very kind person <laughs> seeing that this uh, development is uh, reasonable. So they give you the money. With this money, we're able to spread around Asia and to let the, the different group, including uh, here the model in, in Yangon possible because of the support. Yeah. The support per one city is just to tell you that it's not a lot of money, it's just about 60 US, USD, okay? For one city-wide approach and start the action right away for five to 10 small projects, for one first housing project, for uh, making all the coordination, working with the government for making the survey, for making the saving work, for uh, whatever. Put together around 60,000 per city. If this is the size of the intervention, it's not very really difficult to make big change in several cities yeah. in Myanmar, which already have a lot of social capital. Yeah. So the process start by the survey. This is a must. If you don't survey, you don't know where are the people yeah. and how many of them, what are the status. So using the survey to, 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 to make this change. And, and these are some of the pictures of the small project. Small project means whatever project people feel the need. Yeah? You work together. It, it's the project to let the people bring their energy. Yeah? to work together, to, to organize through the project, a common project. It could be any kind of project. What we want is these people. Huh? We want to use project to build people, okay? We don't just think about the project as project, but this is the project people implement by themselves, make success by themselves, they feel very proud. They manage together. So we use project to build people. I use the, this word, huh? use project to build people, to get them to work together. And, and they deliver very beautiful project, very cheap. $1,000, huh? $2,000 for some of these kind of development. Yeah, the bridge, huh? it's the, have the input of the architect, how to build the bamboo bridge. Yeah, quite a piece of art. Huh? Yeah, so this is just a picture to show how the small project by the people are working. Just get the people into an active mode and to complete in the thing they feel need together. It could be anything, a mangrove forest, water, retaining wall, and so many different kinds of projects produced in the period of four years by different community in Asia. The project is just an intervention to to let people to have the space to see how they solve the problem, to empower them to the action. Yeah? Then moving to the housing project, like the one, this is the picture in Myanmar, and uh, this is in Vietnam. Uh, the key issue is the housing project, because housing project being changed in the status is the lie between informal, illegal, scatter situation into a, a more organized and being citizen of the city. Housing development has that meaning. Yeah? So it's important to move and, and at least one city should show one project. And we 
provide the money so they make the fund and the fund give the loan to the first project so you have you can see different fix let the people do whatever according to the culture and the architects <laughs> who are supporting them you see there are different types this is in tibet this is in mongolia this is in cambodia this is in bangladesh like that and this is why the community architect network have to be organized because by supporting the poor people, the architect is an important uh, development actor to help creating the ability to plan in the community people. This is uh, Cambodia, uh, 18 city. You see the situation of Cambodia is like this, the poor are living like that. That must be 40%. Yeah. So after this kind of support, they can get together and, and make a plan start the saving oh, and this, these are the formal housing with through the process they build something like this the fund that we support is not a lot of money you talk about 40,000 40,000 is not too uh, it's not enough for the whole project but 40,000 is good enough to move the thing to start the negotiation to, to, to see how we start once you start, you will be able to get uh, other support from other parts. Yeah? And in our model of thought, we will not make the money too big. If the money is sufficient, then the poor will not look for any other thing. Yeah? You have to make it insufficient. Enough, but insufficient, so that they have to look for the other support and coordination. And then it, it makes many bridges. And that's why the relationship between the poor and the other can be changed through that process. Uh, it's also good, like this is a fire, big fire, which has happened all the time in poor people earlier. After the fire with the organization, with the network, they're able to negotiate and reconstruct it in the same area. Yeah. Uh, this, which means you can deal with the disaster. This is in Mongolia in 12, 15 cities. You have this housing project and small project. Just quick picture. This is Nepal. It's about uh, 10 cities. You have different types of the small project and the big project uh, where people in the old heritage area, they also uh, improve huh, the housing and also uh, work on the heritage at the same time. In Vietnam, Vietnam is totally, uh, I just visited last week, it's 16 cities where they start this process. So they start the survey and they build this housing. Uh, all this all this old social housing from the period of Ho Chi Minh will be demolished. Oh, yeah? Because it doesn't fit with the new change, new investment. So no matter how good system you have in your country at certain period of time, it will be gone. If we don't further develop or use that potential to change it. So this is the very strategic uh, project where we have to uh, provide a loan and one of the area like this, they get together and they review it. It shows the solution that people can actually stay there if there's a, a financial source and you allow them to make a change. So no problem with that. But the problem is that we don't have any assistance, and then we see the dilapidation, and we think this is the eyesore to the growing city, and we want to get rid of that. Once you get rid of that, you get rid of the people and the rights. We also support the disaster project, and one of the early projects is the Cyclone Nagris here. This is the first uh, intervention we, we support in Myanmar, the first time for me also. So you have this kind of situation, and you let the people be with it. It's very exciting for me. It's the first time I able to support the process in Myanmar. The kind of support is just something like two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar. They they discuss among themselves. We, we, just, we say we put the money in the middle, and they know how much. And then they survey who are the carpenter, who are the one who can do it, and they help each other. They survey it, and they make it. I think the house is so beautiful. Huh? with a very, very small amount of money, and you compare this house with that boxes, 
I say boxes. Huh? Construct by many uh, big uh, housing uh, provision huh? uh, of the, the development agency, even the government. That's more expensive. This is very cheap, very beautiful. So with that same amount, you can do a lot more <laughs> if you let the people do it. Huh? And from that, we moved to uh, Yangon and to see how we could support the people here. The, the project or this intervention is not the project itself. It's like this is a picture in Afghanistan, okay? It allows the people to get together. So once you work together, you're able to talk to each other. You have your platform, you chair, you discuss, you're trying to find a way how you're going to solve the problem together. In some ways, it's kind of a political platform, a, a solution platform uh, for these people who are in need. And then you can have the women to do the inoculation where they never have the role there. So it's something quite significant, all this intervention. It's allow people the space and the tools. We could link the university. This is picture in uh, Cambodia. Most universities are working with the community in different cities. Yeah. So instead of university uh, staying in the ivory tower, uh, okay, in the wall, inside, nothing to do with outside. Uh, university can, can use the actual situation outside as a kind of uh, a learning ground. And then planner architect can plan for the actual uh, situation in the society why we are learning at the same time. Uh, the whole thing is moving into the new politics of cooperation and building local partnership. If we have this cooperation and local partnership, then the problem will be much less because every problem will be brought into a more partnership uh, platform. And this is very important to, to reshape the system of the politics a little bit. So the, the management system would have different party to, to, to participate. If they have the space to participate, the problem of the different group will be less. So just, just to show that uh, the, the big project, I mean the housing project, if you develop citywide, the figure is very similar either in Thailand or in Asia. We found that about half of them can stay in the same place. Poor people community don't need to wait until eviction happen. Then you're thinking of some solution. If we start the citywide in the beginning, half of them can stay there with some change, okay? with new planning yeah. and uh, you have some relocation you have uh, the different types yeah. but half can stay there and just and then they can build the city development fund this is the initial figure to show that once you plan something they put their own resource they bring other resource from the government from other development agency and they build their new funding system yeah. In Thailand, we have this community development fund in about 200 cities where people manage themselves for income generation, for housing, for many others. And, and we assess, we learn from each other in Asian country. This is the assessment we organize in, in Mongolia, maybe. Mongolia and in Philippines. This is the Vietnamese, the people from Cambodia, you know. so we use this regional platform. So the Vietnamese will not think that their system has to be like that all the time. The Myanmar people will not be too confident with the Myanmar system. Oh, oh, over there they can also do that. Oh, over there they can also do that. So break the limit and be more creative. That everything which is positive and bring collaboration being changed to the people on the ground is always possible. Yeah? And so don't fix ourselves with whatever solution that already exists. Yeah? I think this is the last one. Thank you very much. <laughs>